What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another Ginger Runner Live episode 6-0. I grew my beard out to its fullest uh, because tonight's guest it has a legendary beard and, and just great hair in general. Um, I'm very excited to have him on. Finally, after 60 episodes, I get to talk to the legend, uh, the myth, uh, the master. Timothy Olson is joining us on tonight's show. Uh, if you have questions that you would like to ask Timothy, now is your chance. Get into the chat room and ask them away. I am going to be keeping my eyes on the chat room the entire time. I already have a couple pulled away um, from some of you early, early arrivals. Uh, and this show is an hour earlier tonight because of the basketball game that everyone is going to be watching, including myself, in about an hour and 20 minutes or so. Uh, but I'm very excited for tonight's show. Sit back, relax, grab your drink of choice, adult or childlike, and enjoy Ginger Runner Live episode number 6060. <laughs> Ginger Runner. Yes, welcome everybody. Very excited about tonight's show. Uh, there's already so many comments in the chat room about my scruffy beard. Uh, tonight, <laughs> last night, it will exist. I'm pretty sure I'm going to shave it, but I wanted to save it for Timothy Olson, my guest tonight. Uh, an incredible ultra runner, one of the nicest dudes in this sport. If you ever get a chance to meet the guy and talk to him, he's just uh, one of the sweetest guys. Uh, loves the sport, a North Face athlete, um, incredible all-around dude and a uh, family man. And we get to talk to him about as much of it as possible tonight in our amount of time for the show. And without further ado, here he is, Timothy Olson. Welcome to the show. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, yeah, nice beard, man. It's looking good. I trimmed, <laughs> I trimmed up yesterday, so I'm, I'm not, uh, yeah, fully here. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, you look, you look nicely shorn. Yeah, I know. I cleaned up too much, I think, a little bit. Sometimes, uh, you know, the razor or the, the clippers get away on you, and uh, you just have to go with it. Yeah, for uh, sure. Um, well, I'm really excited to have you on the show. Uh, I also realize that my computer is not plugged into hardwire. Hey, Kim, do you mind grabbing my charger? I, I'm making her run around the house right now. Uh, I will be uh, drinking tonight some Infidel, Belgian-style India Pale Ale, Selkirk Abbey Brewing Company. A, a viewer brought this to me by hand at the Gorge race last weekend, so I promised him that I would drink it during the show. Um, and I believe, Tim, you are enjoying some of the uh, some of the red varietals? I'm going for a little a little vino here. I'm actually, I'm double fisting right now. I have a <laughs> little bit of vino and some tea. Um, yeah, a little, oh. a little ginger tea. Um, yeah, I figured I needed to have a drink to be here, and I went all out. And uh, we yeah, went for some tea. I, I just got back like an hour ago from a run, so I'm a... Um, a little loopy, but um, feeling good. Good hard workout today, and beautiful day here in in Boulder. So loving it. Uh, I was actually wanted to talk to you a little bit about training because you moved um, in the last year. I think you moved a couple of times: Ashland, <laughs> Southern California, Colorado. You you were in Europe for a while, I believe. Um, yeah. So now your home base Man. is Colorado. What's it like there? How's the training changed over the last year? Um, yeah, training has been, it's definitely changed a lot. Um, just really focusing, I guess, to, you know, on quantity or quality over quantity, um, which I used to be, um, you know, like I think a lot of ultra runners just, you know, overindulging, just doing it up and I love it and still have my days of going out and spending all day out there, but, um, you know, trying to get a little bit faster, a little bit more turnover, um, on the legs. Um, just, um, you know, not like I'm going to be doing any marathon or shorter distance anytime soon, but, right. um, yeah, just being able to have a little bit more turnover to hang with some of the, the really fast dudes that are entering the sport. So it's, um, yeah, it's cool to be in the sport right now. I mean, it's booming. Um, all kinds of people are enjoying it, loving it. Um, and hopefully that, you know, just that love of nature and respect of nature just stays, you know, as the main front and, um, and then we can enjoy good running and 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 uh, the woods and mountains and all of it. Yeah. So what's the? Um, I totally agree. I I love uh, the way that the sport is is growing, and I I think that's a good message. How has it your um, like the terrain changed? Because I know Ashland is different than SoCal. It's different than Colorado. Do you have a favorite uh, region that you 
Like, is there a reason you moved to Colorado? Is it the terrain? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a huge part of it. Um, you know, altitude helps a lot too. Rocky terrain, just the proximity to you know big ass mountains is uh, uh, definitely one of the main reasons we're here. Right. Um, we've tra- last year we were traveling all over the place. We were in <clears throat> the Canary Islands, Argentina, um, Europe, um, kind of dance around there a little bit, and um, yeah, SoCal for a few months. That, like last year, kind of SoCal was probably our our longest stay in one place. And uh, and then back and forth to Ashland a little you know a little bit and we just sold our house um, kind of the beginning of the the year and um, yeah have a nice you know just a little rental unit here um, you know kind of central centrally located that it's a uh, you know mile to to uh, Sanitas which is a nice little climb rocky climb um, just kind of down the way and then a couple miles to like Chautauqua where. You have, um, you know, kind of the iconic uh, Flatirons, Green Mountain, Bear, uh, Sobo. Um, yeah, so lots of good peaks. Um, definitely some technical areas in there. Also, just you know, nice tr- chill, like kind of rolling areas too. So um, it just has a lot to offer. And not that like SoCal or Ashland didn't. Um, right. The the one thing that I think is a little bit different here is having that uh, uh, elevation and uh, the altitude. Right. And as I try to, you know, do things like hard rock or just, um, you know, more a little bit more mountainous stuff, I need I need to be a little bit more comfortable at that. And uh, so we're here and now. And actually, the having the proximity to to Denver Airport too is also huge. Um, family can come in. We've the past few weeks we've been kind of having a bed and breakfast here, so we've had a lot of people um, through, um, which is awesome to have family that can just, you know, jump on a two-hour plane ride. So. Ashland, getting to like Medford Airport there was, you know, it was just a long day. So, yeah, um, yeah and then traveling, just we we travel a lot, and so this this helps with that as well. Um, you touched on it uh, briefly as far as as training and kind of how your training has changed. Mm-hmm. Um, was there a reason behind that? Uh, maybe quantity, or you you mentioned quality over quantity. Uh, getting the new coach and, and stuff like that was was there a period that you you wanted to address and like reassess and then kind of reattack or was it something specific or just kind of a refocus? Yeah, it was a, I guess a refocus. It was, it was a lot of um, a lot of little things kind of getting there and I think more for me it's just um, you know I've been doing this for a few years and just you know just loving it and um, having a good time with it and and kind of just you know reaching what my body could. Could do with that, and um, and you know I just don't have a huge knowledge in in all the stuff that uh, Jason Coop does, um, and just having someone to you know um, you know go back and forth with that, getting to talk and kind of figuring out uh, what's going to be the best way to to peak for different races. Yeah. Um, and then I you know it's just been um, it's been good you know for family life too it's just really hard to juggle everything and you know for me kind of my mainstay was just going out for really long runs and I, I love that but it's not always practical to be you know doing you know 30 hours of running a week when you know you have a, a wife and, and son and you need to care of them and then just you know other um, obligations work obligations actually having friends um, you know all, all those type of things so um, it was just kind of it boiled down and then I guess uh, missed a main point there, but just the, the body was really, my body was really beat up over just, you know, the past, you know, four or five years of, of training, racing really hard, and, um, you know, and I, I really go by feel and everything I, I do, how I run, even when I'm doing the different intervals and stuff I'm doing now, um, I really try to just tap into my body, and that's who I, that's what I listen to, you know, for the most part, but having the, a coach to, you know, just to go back and forth with, and um, having someone else besides my wife yell at me to like, you know, to chill out a little bit is right. is good. So, um, yeah, it's been great. And like, I just got through a phase of doing um, just like these three minute re- like repeats at you know ten percent plus grade or something like that. And um, and yeah, it, it's it was it was hard. I was like. It was really exhausting, and today I kind of it's we're kind of switching gears a little bit. Now I'm doing you know a little bit more tempo style, where I'm um, doing four or so like repeats between ten and twenty minutes um, at just a like you know just a little bit more chill, like on a scale of you know to out of ten, like an eight or nine. I'm keeping these at or like keep it at an eight, and then kind of reaching that point towards the end where 
the three minute three minute was kind of just all out as much as I could do, and I I've, I've never really done anything like that, and I, I wasn't doing it on a track, so it wasn't like speed work, but I mean it was that I was just going up a hill um, as hard as I possibly could, and it was just something I haven't done, so it was um, I think it was really good for me, and I'm very happy it's over with right now, uh, <laughs> but but uh, I'm just you know the run today was just like I've been all my runs have been. Be, couple hours like max I've done a couple long runs but just really short stuff and um, not a lot of extra junk miles which was kinda hard for me um, you know to, to do that but now like today was you know two and a half three about three hours of running and just some really hard um, 12 minute repeats that eventually brought me up to the top of green um, found kind of a little dirt road that I use and then to the top of green on the backside through Ranger um, so I was kind of doing those, and, and then got to take the top of green, you know, sit there and just kind of, you know, sit in that little zen state for a while. And uh, it's, like I said, beautiful day here, so the mountains uh, were nice and perky in the background. And uh, yeah, so it was, it was great. And then just kind of made my way down. And again, like the train here, um, there was definitely some places in SoCal that were nice and technical that got me ready for yeah. some races. And I don't think people know that as much that there is. It's not all carpet trails in 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 Cali, so. Um, getting to experience that last year was great, and um, I really had a good time in SoCal last year. A lot of really awesome runners, people out there, and you know we have we have friends in all different spots. It's you know that's kind of the tricky part with a uh, with LA is you know it's kind of hard to go and meet people um, because you have to go through all the traffic and whatnot. So big, yeah, such a yeah. big city. And so um, yeah, so we're we're here now, and it's pretty sweet. Like I have um, uh, Scott Jerk is like two blocks you know down the way, so we meet up for some runs and. Uh, Tony and, and Joe Grant here, other you know buddies that I get to hang with, and they're kind of uh, you know pushing me towards some more mountainous uh, adventures. So I got good people um, showing me the way, and um, yeah, it's it, I'm really stoked to be here right now and, and just enjoying this. Yeah, it's been it's been pretty awesome to talk to uh, a number of guys that are located in that same area, and they talk about the, the terrains and the mountains and uh, and just it's your backyard and you have all this amazing high altitude alpine uh, climbing and stuff what I love about um, you posted on Instagram with your photos you talk about it on Facebook uh, you, you talk a lot about this Zen state or you talk about being able to kind of transcend the physical pain uh, and we, we, we see it as fans following your races like Hard Rock last year you were able to kind of work through these these dark spots um, the first question about this subject will kind of relate to your training. Mm -hmm. Last year, you you were always mentioning uh, going for long runs in the mountains, 20 plus miles, and just being able to kind of find that zen state. Now that you have the coach who's kind of locking you down, um, maybe getting that quality over quantity, are you still able to find it? Are you still able to kind of get to those places that allow you to transcend? Uh, yeah, um, that's a great question, and um, something that you know, brought me into to ultra running and, and why I love it so much is, you know, just, um, you know, going out, just kind of connecting with nature, connecting with all your senses and just, uh, you know, letting those kind of, um, you just, you know, being very curious ab about them, you know, what you, what you smell, what you see, you know, what you feel as you're running out, out there. Um, and that's, I mean, what I try to bring into my running on a daily basis and to, in just life is just an awareness of, um, you know, just what's going on inside. Um, and with that, trying to quiet my mind down. I think a lot of people, we just have a lot going on uh, with work, family, you know, just so many things. No matter what your life situation is, um, normally, for most people, I think they feel, you know, the brain's going all the time. It's hard to quiet it down. And um, and it's a good thing, you know. You want the brain to work and, and you know, be functional. But I think there's... Um, you know, I think there's good in trying to, to focus and control that a little bit so you're not just, you know, a lot of times the mind is just repeating stuff over and over again, either from the, you know, from the past or, or you know, the future, what's coming up, and so you just have all these thoughts, thoughts and a lot of them, um, for me at least, seem to be like self-doubt or just kind of anxious feelings um, that aren't very present, and so... Um, you know, over the last five or six years, I've, I've started like a, you know more meditation practice and um, just even doing my when I was doing massage, um, just you know just being very aware of the present moment. And so I try to take that into my running. And um, I think a lot of uh, you know a lot of runners, a lot of hikers, a lot of people that enjoy nature go out there and just 
just go and enjoy it and like not even trying purposely going for that like zen or like flow state but like it just you know just happens sometime and and I think that's great and that's kind of how I rolled with it for a lot it was just kind of like oh okay I feel really good right now and chill and just enjoying the run and that's great and that's I think one of the reasons why a lot of us love it so much um, and for me I'm trying to you know bring that that feeling that that awareness um, to the run, that focus to the run before I step out on the trail. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not going out there and trying to get this, this, you know, zen-like feeling. I'm hoping to have that before I, I go out there. And um, like something I we just uh, launched today that the registration is going live on Wednesday for our Run Mindful Retreats. Um, and love, you know, uh, let's, you know, a little plug for it. If anybody wants to come out to there, it's, I'm really excited to share the trails. We're going to do a couple here in Boulder. Um, and possibly a couple other places too. SoCal um, might be one too. Just we have a lot of friends, family, loved ones, all you know, all around the world, and we'd like to share uh, these experiences um, in places where people live that we know, and uh, just places that really uh, you know touched our hearts, and and um, just have we feel like just really powerful, good energy places that we want to like want to spend some time there. So um, we're we're putting these on, and you know, it's it's going to be based about going running and having a good time and you know, the camaraderie of just this awesome community of, you know, runners, hikers, enjoying nature, but also, you know, a little bit of um, just some mindfulness practice where we will talk, you know, a little bit about meditation um, and, you know, something simple as just, you know, 10 minutes a day of just, just sitting there and not, you know, not worrying about um, trying to get a specific, like, zen spot or something, but just sit and do nothing for 10 minutes and breathe and focus on that. And, you know, even if you're not meditating, you like that's the one thing about the the retreats is it's not supposed to be like this big woo woo thing where we're gonna light incense and like own the whole time and and that's great if that's how you meditate like whatever gets you to you know calm down and and focus on your breath I think is great but I I really want to just kind of um, you know just br bring people's awareness attention to their breath to how they're feeling um, all the time just can kind of just observe. Uh, those those thoughts, those feelings, and not react to them, but just observe them. And I think once you kind of have a practice like that, um, more and more, uh, when you you know your your kid uh, spills the milk, or you know you're you're angry with your your partner or something like that, you can uh, focus on your breath and kind of take that that peace and tranquility you feel out on the trails um, that that we all kind of know, and then bring it into your day to day life. So when you go to work and life is really stressful and you got deadlines and stuff like that, all right, let's you know, let's take yeah. a, mo a moment, breathe, and um, you know, set our attention, our, in our intention, and our intentions on something positive, and you know, come from a place of like uh, gratitude instead of uh, fear or anger, or all, all those different emotions that come up, and uh, you know, going um, into life with um, a more positive outlook. I think can really change, you know, just uh, life in a huge way, and it and it can be something that like you know not everyone has time to to do, um, you know, go for run for five hours and get that zen like steak, but maybe you can take ten minutes a day or five minutes a day to just sit and uh, not you know try to not think about anything and just be aware of uh, just your emotions, how you're feeling, feel your body, and I think it's just a really powerful thing. Um, to help people out, and so I'm just I want to try to share that and, and share it through like some experiences that I've had through running. Um, you know, like uh, you don't always have perfect days, and so like you know some and some days you do. I've had some good days at Western States, and I've had some you know so subpar okay days um, at other races, and even to like things like Hard Rock this past year when it was you know pretty much just a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, I was, you know, as you, as a lot of people have probably seen, just kind of laying on a on a, a shitty mattress for a while, and we all we all we all have, you know, these different things that pop up, and it's nice when life flows and goes well, but a lot of times it doesn't. So, um, you know, just to build to prepare for that, and I think that's what's helped me a lot in my running, and um, something I really enjoy of like those hard moments, like Hard Rock this past year was was an extremely difficult uh, time, but also a really enjoyable time, and for the most part is like you get to that point where you're thinking too much like oh man my race is going terrible I'm throwing up right. I feel like crap and and then you can just get down and just you know let that take you um, or you can you know try to turn that around and just you know like just keep putting one foot in front of the other think positive 
Uh, focus on your breath. Don't you know? Don't think about the race. Don't think about everything else. But just accept what is. And even if you know, like what I try to think about when I go for a, a run, a race, is just um, you know, accept it like I chose it. And for running, it's really uh, easy because I did choose it. I signed up for the race, and um, this is what I'm doing. Like I mean, I people have it so rough in life, and I you know I can't complain when I'm just having a rough day going for a run. Um, so I try to always think of that. I, I mean, I think that's fantastic. Uh, where can people find out more about these Be Mindful Retreats? Is there a yeah, yeah it's, a, it's just on my website right now, so timothyallenolson.com. And then, um, and then either, you, I mean, I kind of have it going on all over the place. So, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, I'm on all those streams. So I've, I've probably thrown a thousand links out there. So um, shouldn't be that hard to find. But uh, and just Run Mindful is the, the name of the, the retreat. And... Um, we have, uh, um, I think I just posted something today a little bit about it, so the link's at the bottom that takes you to registration and stuff. Awesome. Yeah, people are already in the chat room like, huh, what happens when we meet Timothy Allen Olson? Like, what, do we take a selfie? Uh, do, we, do we say hello? And uh, this is a great opportunity to actually run and meet him. Yeah, yeah. And yes, take those selfies that you need to take with, uh, with Timothy. Um, how would you or I guess how are you um, transferring this sort of mindset onto Tristan, uh, raising him in the mountains and on the trails and, and making sure that he um, uh, grows up with that same passion that you have for the outdoors? Yeah, I think the best thing that I can do for him is just step away as much as possible and let him become who he is. Um, I think we all have that, like, within us of, like, just, you know, there's a in all of us, there's a lot of love, there's a lot of um, positive, you know, vibrations, and sometimes we, we make mistakes, we get lost, we lose, uh, like for me, back in the day when I kind of got into some struggles, kind of just lose the joy of being, and just being who you are, and yeah. too worried about what people think about you, and, and you know, just a lot of just mental noise, like I touched on earlier, and um, for me, I just kind of want let, let my little guy just you know do what he wants to do and play, and that that's what I try to do as an adult. I just try to play and and you know be happy and be grateful for everything. And so, if I can, you know, just kind of live my life, and he sees some some positive things through that, and it that makes you know piques his interest, his curiosity that like oh maybe you know I I might want to go check out this mountain stuff. Um, that would be awesome. I'd love to you know share this with them and, and go for that. And if he doesn't, you know, that's how life goes and I, I just want to be there for him and support him or whatever, you know, whatever he chooses. Um, but it is, you know, it's around him all the time. We go for hikes yeah. and we uh, go up mountains. He's been in a bunch of different countries and he's got to see so much and, you know, he's young so, like, he won't remember all that. But it, I think it all just kind of goes into you and, um, you know, the where you, you grow up and things that happen to you, that all kind of um, makes you who you are. And uh, with, like, meditation, like, he's, he's really cool with it, actually. Like, um, not that we don't make him do that or anything, but, like, if he gets mad or something, we'll try to get him to, like, just breathe and, like, you know, can you count to three and, and relax. And he knows when um, I meditate, like, me and my wife both meditate, um, you know, once or twice a day in just random spots. It's not like we, uh, we don't really have, like, some shrine that we sit in front of and, like, a special thing. We just kind of find times that it can work into our life and it's nice to have a routine to it where you're doing it you know around the same time but a lot of times I'll just kind of like before I go for a run or just um, I'm, I'm working on some stuff and just feeling a little um, you know not present I'll just take 10 minutes and, and meditate and sometimes I use uh, this, this really cool app that I love it's called Headspace and it's got this like yeah this take 10 that it's like you can download it it's free for you know for 10 sessions and you can repeat that over and over again to, you know to your heart content and um, it's a great little thing that the guy that does it is just really chill really um, he explains it in a really you know a good way and easy uh, like somewhat easier way to understand um, and um, so I, I'll use that sometimes, and sometimes that gives Tristan, like, the cue that we're, like, that's going on right now, and every couple minutes he just kind of says something, kind of leading you through um, the meditation, like, self-guided type thing, and or um, and um, it it's, it's works out really well, and then Tristan will know that's going on, and he'll come to me and, like, is daddy ohm? <laughs> so, like, and occasionally, like, I don't, I don't sit in ohm um, at all, but, like, when he comes by and he's kind of wondering what I'm doing, 
I'll, some, I'll just take a big breath and say Om instead of like explaining to him that I'm meditating again, and he just gets, yeah. gets that. And sometimes he comes and sits on my lap and and will actually breathe with me. He'll even say Om, which is really uh, uh, cute uh, to to watch. But that's um, awesome. Yeah, I just kind of let him do his thing, and he he for the most part gives us our space when we just need a little bit to do that. And and sometimes. Um, you know, he's a, a little kid, and like, just life situations come up, so you can be in the middle of a meditation, and it just doesn't, it's not happening at that point, and he needs um, his attention, so um, I just mindfully try to, like, you know, come from that, and just realize that this isn't the time to do it, and, and try to take care of him the best I can, and hopefully that influences him in some way, and um, yeah, I, I, I mean, that's kind of my goal in life, is hoping, you know, helping him whatever way I can, to, so he has a good life, and um, yeah, so hopefully, so hopefully something clicks in there, and if not, you know, he'll he'll find his way. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so cool to follow you uh, on the social media because since I don't live in in Colorado, uh, but being able to see you out there with your family and taking him on these adventures, and yes, he has been more places on this planet than a majority of people. Uh, <laughs> he's a very well traveled young man. Um, yes, it's it's going to be really kind of cool to follow you, and as he grows and kind of see how the the family dynamic and changes and how he discovers himself and stuff. Um, let's go back a little bit. Uh, you mentioned having good days and having bad days. Uh, you have had some incredible races, Western States 2012, 2013, uh, multiple races, Waldo. Um, and last year following you at Hard Rock was it was tough remotely. Uh, on social media and following Twitter and, and all these things because you're like, oh, I just want Tim to do so well. <laughs> and then to, to read these stories and hear these interviews and stuff like that, um, I've been dying to ask you what happened that day. Was it a, uh, was it a nutrition thing or uh, altitude thing? Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't completely put it together, but I, more of an altitude, I think. Altitude, um, yeah... I, you know, I don't think I pushed it too early, but I, I, you know, think sometimes you can push it a little bit too much at altitude, and once you've kind of stepped over the line there, it's really hard to get it back. Yeah. Um, and so for me, it's just like the first, you know, 50k felt relatively relaxed, easy. I, I was maybe a little dehydrated. I didn't bring. I only brought one handheld for a couple of passes, which I think was a little too long going over like Oscar's pass and back into Telluride, and. Um, that I think that hurt me a little bit because kind of where things went wrong is the climb out of Telluride, and I just yeah everything started like shutting down and really not working well um, at that that time where I was like I I just couldn't breathe I couldn't you know get a breath and it just felt like in my sternum like the like someone just punched me there and it just stayed there forever and so I eventually um, got to Ure, um hours later. And uh, just you know, just in a bad spot. But I was like, okay, I'm down here. That's the, it's the lowest part of the course. So I'm like, okay, I can get a little bit more oxygen. Sit down for a minute. Um, and it was just really, it was really chaotic around. There's a lot of people. It's you know, it's fun to have all that all that excitement. But I just knew I couldn't sit there and like kind of regroup. So I I needed to get out of there. So I got out of the aid station and went down. Um, you know, like the next. You know, mile and a half. I think took me a couple hours or something to like. Um, there's a, there's eventually a road crossing, and uh, so like friends and some people are waiting for me at that crossing. And there's, it, it's not hard. It was like you know a couple hundred foot climb up from there. But I I got to this little climb and I knew it was to go up to the road and I just couldn't move anymore. And um, so I sat on this like this log for a minute, like trying to like get my head around like just climbing up there and getting you know get moving. Um, and I just, I just couldn't do it. Like mentally, I was just already just hurting so bad, and like physically, like they just like back to like that. The I think the altitude definitely a little bit, but just like I couldn't breathe. I couldn't get a breath, and I felt like someone just you know slugged me in the sternum, and it wouldn't go away. Um, and so I like I laid on this you know, this really shitty mattress for a while, and um, which is really nice. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, my my um my good buddy uh, Chris Reniker was um, pacing me at that that point. So even he was really actually sweet. He's like, you know, you want me to you mind if I take a picture? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no problem. That's that's great. Um, but that mattress, it was like you know, sitting and baking in the sun. 
Um, it was definitely, it's been there for a while, so, like, you know, a lot of animals did their thing on it. It was really nasty, but, it like, it felt so warm and comfortable. It was so sweet. So I, I, cur <laughs> I, cur I curled there for a little bit, and, you know, I just, I, I didn't want to move, but I eventually got up and, and then threw up um, a lot. And, like, I could finally breathe for the first time in, you know, I don't know how many hours. Um, but then, like, that just kept repeating itself for a while. Um, yeah. It was, yeah, it was really challenging. But then, you know... I think kind of I got up. Um, I'm not gonna remember all the, the passes, but um, got over the next pass, and it's a really long time. But you come to like the aid, you know, the next aid station, and um, and that's where you go over Handy's. It's the, the you know the aid station right before going over Handy's Peak, the big tall one. But it was really as you, a lot of people, if you've read or followed um, Hard Rock last year, big storms, lightning storms, and it um, it hit the pass um, where I was. Um, and then we're over to Handy's, and so I had like lightning um, right next to me. It was it was one of the scariest things ever, and I think that kind of uh, you know helped me a little bit get out of my hole because like I went from like feeling bad and just like I haven't ate anything, throwing up all the place to like oh let's let's live, yeah like like life is good. I probably shouldn't be hit by this. Yeah. So I like that that got me moving, and then running down to the next uh, aid station, I like started feeling a little bit better, um, and just like. Not better, like I was going to continue on in a like a fast way, but like I think that just kind of shocked me to realize, you know, just how valuable, excuse me, how valuable life is, how how um, you know, it's it's always your call, and you need to make the right call if this is something safe to do, or if you should call it a day. And um, at that point, um, I had my wife push me out of the car once I got done with that, but really, I mean, she helped a lot, and you know, helped push me out of there and get moving, but. Um, I really wanted to keep going on, and um, and I just I never had that point yet in my career of like wanting to stop a race and right. um, like really wanting to stop. Like you always have your you know everyone in an ultra is like why the hell do I do this? Like this is you know this is stupid at some point, but then that that turns around and and it, it you know it comes back. And I think when you're you focus on your breath and you you focus on pos positive things like that can turn around a little bit quicker. Um, but a lot of times, like, you know, you can say that all you want, but I was trying to think positive, and I was not feeling positive. So, like, you know, we all have those moments, too. And um, it was a really fun challenge for me to, like, try to turn this around. And, you know, it never it never really turned around. I maybe felt a little better the last few miles, but it was just, you know, just a really awesome challenge. And that's one of the reasons I, you know, I come to do these ultras is just to, like, really go deep within myself see what I'm made of, and, um, you know, just kind of roll with the punches. And, I mean, that makes ultra running such a fun sport and uh, a very interesting sport and um, just, you know, this this life journey that we go on. And um, it takes me, you know, deep sometimes, and I, I love that. And and then, like, uh, uh, later on, I so I finally finished uh, Hard Rock, which was incredible. Loved it, great experience. I can't wait to get back. Um, I'm hoping to be back there this this year. Not I didn't get in, but I'm going to go there and, and uh, cr cr crew, a pace, yeah, do whatever I can do um, to help out some friends there and stuff. Um, and just be a part of, you know, that it's, you know, it's like Western States, just like a really awesome vibe, like this family feeling of just people that really care about the area and the people out there. And you just, uh, you know, you just feel like family there. And I really enjoyed that. I want to experience that, you know, every year I, I possibly can. So I'm hoping to be back to that race more and more and, um, and then, yeah, just uh, I'll go there and enjoy it and enjoy the, the San Juans in a different way, not having to race them, just going to play. Um, yeah, and so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. That's awesome. And uh, you have an, a, a really intricate write-up that kind of goes through that whole day. Um, I've just been wanting to ask you the question uh, yeah. in person for a long time, but if anyone wants to go and follow his, his full race write-up from Hard Rock last year, well worth the read. There's a lot of funny moments and a lot of like, oh my god, you know, like ter terrifying <laughs> moments. Uh, so it was great, great to hear from you. And I have to say that that story that day has helped inspire me and countless others push through the times that are really, really tough. Because like you said, everyone hits that moment in an ultra that where you question why you're doing it. You question, do I even need to continue? Like, what's the point? Yeah. That, you know, you're just yeah. at the bottom. <laughs> But remembering, uh, I wasn't there. I didn't see it in person. But just hearing the stories and reading your, uh, reading your report and stuff is like Tim did so much more on, in harder circumstances, on a tougher course, 
nut up, Ethan, and just push through. <laughs> it, it helps a lot. It absolutely well, helps. Thank you. I appreciate that. And yeah, it was it was a fun experience. I really enjoyed it. And like, it's funny. Like, it's funny because you have really bad experiences in races sometimes, and you're like, yeah. oh, that was that was really awful. But I had, you know, there were hard experiences, but like. Uh, I, I loved it still, and even like it was a little hard to swallow through, like you know, accept it while I was going on. But you know, I, I eventually did accept what was going on, and then like you know, got into it, and I suffered a little time. But I like I got to different aid stations, and I've never got to do this at aid stations. Like I sat down, I had like bacon and eggs and tea, and <laughs> um, man, just sat by a fire for a while and warmed up. And, and Fritos, tons and of Fritos, tons of Fritos, man. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was digging Fritos that day. <laughs> Uh, but it was it was a fun experience. So, um, it's uh, I encourage anyone to go read it. Um, it's well worth the read, and it will inspire you to to push through in those times of um, times of adversity or, or tough times. Uh, there are so many questions in the chat room. You guys have been yeah. typing them, and I've been copying and pasting them. So I'm going to kind of go through them now. Uh, if we do move into a, a short post show, because we did start the show a little bit late, I want to make sure that uh, we we get Tim out um, on schedule. If I miss them in the main show, I will ask them quickly in the post show. Sean asks, asks, what is your pre-race routine from wake up on race day to race start? Great question. Good, good question, Sean. Yeah, uh, yeah, great question. I um, normally, uh, you know, try to get up um, depending on what race it is, but like a hundred or, or like a, a more of a goal goal race that I'm going for. I get up two hours early and uh, get some green tea going, and normally I have a couple scoops of like nut butter. Um, yeah, so I'll get a couple hundred calories down, eat some green tea. I mean, sorry, drink some green tea, and uh, you know, get get the get the bowels moving a little bit. Uh, you know, it's I'm not used do to waking up. That, that, yeah. Do what you gotta do. So, um, yeah, and then just, I kind of normally have everything kind of laid out and kind of a plan. So I I'll listen to music for a little while. I'll listen to, like chill stuff. So I'll actually try to like meditate for you know 10, 15 minutes if I can there. Of just really you know focusing on my the day ahead and um, just kind of some different points of the course. So just really setting intentions for a positive day and thinking about uh, you know how the race is going to play out, but just like different points on the course and what I can do and 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 trying to set those you know that focus on when things get tough of like how I, how to deal with that. So I try to have like you know this little time of just this quiet time and relaxed and just chill out um, and then I'll and then I'll go get some tunes going and then you know crank them up and get a little more fired up and or even if I'm running to go check in or whatnot I normally have like some headphones in at that time and just listen to some music uh, just really get into my own space and um, you know say hi to a few people give some hugs and uh, that's basically it um, you know make sure I'm, I'm lubed up on every inch of my body a lot of body glide um, for the race, and um, yeah, if I have a pack like uh, you know, like one of the like UD packs, make sure that's all all fired up, and I didn't forget anything. Um, you know, uh, kiss my wife and son if they're awake, and, uh, and then go play in the woods. And I guess I I set the intention before every race of like, and my wife is good at reminding me of it. Like you know, just go play in the woods. Like it's not like it is a race. It is all this other jazz and stuff like that. But what it comes down to. Is just playing in the woods and having fun and being free, and so I try to think of that. And uh, yeah, just like you know, whenever I get those those feelings, those emotions going in, I just I just feel like energized and like you know ready for whatever comes my way, and uh, and that's what I try to do before race. Uh, uh, gear wise, you mentioned Ultimate Direction. Will there be a new Timothy Olsen pack? Yeah. <laughs> Since you are uh, a member of Team The North Face, uh, never stop exploring, do you have a Timothy Olsen shoe coming out, or have you had any input in a lot of the gear that they've been putting out um, over the last season or the upcoming season? Yeah, so I'm meeting with Buzz tomorrow at Ultimate Direction, so we'll have to talk about a pack. But for the most part, I'm just kind of like, I've been using their stuff forever, and I could never um, join UD because um, North Face was doing packs and whatnot, but they've, they've backed out from that, and I, um, Buzz even knew about it for, before I did, so he, he contacted me, and we're like, let's, you know, let's finally make this official. I've been using those packs forever, and they're great. The handhelds, like, um, yeah, I've just, that's what I, I was handed one of those, like, when I first started running, and I, I've used, you know, other ones, but, like, that one I just keep coming back to and, and love, so I use that. Um, yeah, and the pack's great because I, depending on what I throw in there, even like you know a couple hour runs and stuff. Sometimes I'll throw it in when I go for runs here, just to carry like you know I don't have to use a handheld. I'll just throw in one of their flasks in there and 
and then then some extra clothes. It's always nice to have that. So, and then with the North Face, um, you know, I've been like ever since I joined the team, like they've they've flown me there a few times, and I've really had um, really good relationships with the the footwear team. And it's been you know a slow process, but like you know a few years ago, their their shoes were crap. Like it was it was really rough and. Um, and we've been working really hard. The you know they've all been doing their thing there, and I feel the guys that are on it now um, are finally getting into their groove and understanding um, you know what the trail community wants and um, you know what could be a shoe that a lot of people can use you know from you know door door to trail. So um, and that's the thing. Like for me, you know I'm blessed that I can pretty much get on trail right away, and it's rocky. So what I use isn't going to be exactly what somebody else uses when they have to you you know do. Um, you know, not dirt, not trails for a lot of it. They have to do some roads. So the shoe that I've been working a lot with with them is the Cardiac, and I think that's out right now. And um, you know, my my uh, shoe normally has a few tweaks to it, or is like a, pro- a prototype for the next model. So um, yeah, but I'm always like I'm constantly giving feedback, and not always the sweetest about it. But like you know, I try to give it in a nice way. But I'm like I'm. Like I'm here to really help make those shoes be something that people wear and something that I want to wear all the time. And as people have known, I haven't worn them for races because they just weren't dialed in exactly uh, right. And now I've like um and used to have a lot more different shoes um that I you know test and and play with. And I've really just been wearing the Cardiac um, a lot. They have another one called the Flight that will be out soon. And um, Rob Carr has been helping a lot with this one too. And it's a really lightweight. Um, shoe that I think prototypes, yeah, it looks yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, it lo- it's it's really sweet, and for for me, it's something I've been using when I'm doing like my speed work type stuff. Um, yeah. You know, over over the years, I like everybody, like you know, you go from you start with one shoe, and I like when I first started, I was like running in the the um, you know Brooks. Um, was it Cascadia? Yeah, like that's what I started with because yeah, it's just it's a classic shoe. It lasted me for a while. The first time. You know, I, I got one of those shoes. I wore I wore it for a thousand miles. Like I was just, you know, I I didn't have sponsors giving me shoes. So like you got to find a shoe that works and lasts for a while. So, like the shoes that we've been working at with the North Face. Now I'm trying to find a shoe that you know can work for a lot of people. It's not going to be your you know eight ounce or seven ounce you know lightweight shoe, but it's a shoe that's going to have you know nice and cushy that feels comfortable right from the start, and then has that protection um, that's going to last you for a hundred plus or, or, or more miles and and then also, you know, trying to find a shoe that you have that we I, I personally like a little softer midsole when I'm when I'm running and the shoe that I have I you know, I've been running in a pair now that has been, you know, three to four hundred miles. So I'm I'm really trying to test the shoes out to make sure that it's not like, you know, two hundred and done shoe. So I've been really digging the shoe and um, hoping to, you know, keep um, gunning and trying to give the best feedback I can give so they can translate that to something that can sell and people are really happy with. Um, it's been cool. Yeah, it's been, it's, it has been cool to kind of follow you guys and and see the new shoes being developed because you can see these new products and go, oh yeah, Tim had a hand in this one, or you know yeah. Rob had the the hand in this shoe, and you, you can kind of see that, and it's it's really kind of cool to see the development process uh, mm-hmm. to pan out. This we're uh, we're going to uh, oh sorry one thing we're going to uh, the North Face uh, Summit this next week, so like all of us are getting together there and a um, lot of meetings. So that's gonna like uh, Solomon's been doing that this like week uh, last week, so. Um, we're all going to get together and uh, do a lot of talking, try to dial in a lot of different things, um, just the the whole whole gear set, and and then we get to like hang with a bunch of really awesome people. Like being with the North Face team is amazing because like there's just so many incredible athletes, and like you know you're looking around and Jimmy Chin's over there and and Conrad Anchor, and it's just you know just incredible um, people. So I just kind of soak that in and realize um, all the people that you get to hang out with is, is pretty dope. Yeah, where are you guys meeting so I can show up and yeah. <laughs> take a bunch of photos? <laughs> we'll be in Ca- California just at their their headquarters in Alameda for a couple of days, and then we're going to go to Yosemite and uh, spend right, a few we'll days there. there. All right. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. See, we'll see you all there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this question comes from Adam574, and it was something I wanted to uh, make sure I asked during the Prime show. Mm-hmm. It was go- uh, many, many people asked the same question. What is on your race calendar this year? I know that you already raced Sean O'Brien, uh, the marathon. What are you thinking about doing for 2015? What are, what are some of the races? Yeah, I, I just posted my, my lineup on my website, too, so feel free to go check that out, and I normally put some links on it. To, uh, you can go check out the race if you want to come and join me. 
Um, but yeah, I'm doing a couple international races to start the year off. So I'm gonna um, go to Transvulcania um, with less than like about a month away um, in May. Um, we'll be doing doing that one, and I think uh, it's, yeah, I've done that three times now. So I really love that island. Love the people there. The energy. It's just so many people to come out to this race, and it's just it's so incredible. Um, and then the like, I mean, there's the people, the island, which is is awesome, but also the the course is just awesome. You start at the south of the island, you run up this, you know, the this ridge line, which is a caldera, all the way to the top, which is almost like 9,000 feet. So oh. um, in the first 50k, first 50k, you're climbing 10 or 11,000 feet. It's just awesome. And then you have to drop, drop down. Um, like in 20k, you're losing like you know 8,000 feet or something like that back down to Tezacorte, which um, yeah. And then you come down these like cobbled stairs. It's just beautiful, and people like people are playing drums. It's just so such a cool spot. So I'm really looking forward to that. Wow. That's all I'll start the year, um, and then to hopefully that gets me in, in good shape. I'm going to go do Lavaredo um, at the end of June, um, so I'll be doing that, and that's, I think, 110, 120K. I'm not exactly sure how long it is, but over 100K, um, super technical and in, in areas, and then you have, like, the Dolomites, like, all around you. So um, I've been there once um, after UTMB a couple of years ago. Um, for like a photo shoot, and it was just just amazing. So I've been wanting to get there for the last couple of years. So um, doing that one, and then I'm jumping to um, back to the states and kind of hanging around this area for a while. So I'm going to do the the Dirty Thirty, which is in Golden, really close, like a 20 minute drive um, from Boulder here. And um, then I will be doing um, going to help at Hard Rock, and then coming back from Hard Rock. Um, there's uh, an Aspen, another 50k that's part of the U.S. Sky Running. So I really wanted. I I love Sky Running. I'm really stoked that um, Ian Sharman's like killing it and like you know organizing all these, getting it you know dialed in. Um, has some really awesome races, you know, from the East Coast to the West Coast. So like you know, just getting you know all the flavors of trails and part of it. And uh, so I'm doing that one in Aspen, which is called the uh, Power Four um, 50k. Um, which I'm yeah I'm really excited for that another close like close by race, and after that I will be doing in August uh, Tusher uh, 93k um, again part of the Skyrunning series. Um, Matt Matt Gunn puts it on, which is a really cool dude. puts on a really awesome race. So um, I was at Bryce 50 last year where my wife ran her first 50 miles. So I got to kind of see him put on the race uh, and uh, the area there. And so Utah's another beautiful spot and. So we're really looking forward to spending a little bit more time there this summer. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then, let's see, that's August 2nd, I believe, or, or at the beginning of August. And then I'm um, gearing up for Run Rabbit Run as, like, the 100. I'm trying to, to n dial in. So, um, yeah, I've done it a few times, and I'm always doing it. Like, the first time I did it, it was, like, a couple, you know, just a few weeks after Tristan was born. So that I was not, yeah, feeling the best going to that. But, you know, still had a really fun time. I really love Steamboat. Really, you know, cute little town, and just the way that uh, he ran the course. It comes through town a few times, so it's like a little bit more spectator friendly. Um, yeah. It also has a nice prize purse. So um, this is my business now. So winning a few bucks would be awesome. Um, it's not the the main goal, but hopefully I can have a good good day there and um, yeah, have a good experience. Are you gonna make that your A race, or are you gonna kind of focus on each race as a as an individual? Uh. In, in, I'm pro that will definitely be a focus race. I I love hundreds. Like I I'll do the 50ks and I'm just not, um, you know I'm just not the fastest dude when it comes to 50ks and so I I respect that and use the shorter distances to like kind of dial in um, nutrition, dial in the body and just having that race experience. Um, so you know th those other races we'll see what happens race day and if I'm feeling good I'm definitely gonna gun it. But hopefully just to come out of those. Um, feeling stronger, so I can put a good good run down in Steamboat at Run Rabbit Run. Yeah, it's, it's actually been pretty prevalent in this last season that I've been as a spectator seeing that the 50k runners, you know, the times are getting faster and faster, and the yeah. miler uh, you you don't necessarily see the people translate from the 50k to a 50 miler, but even more so from 50 miler runners to the 100k to the 100 miler speed difference, like. What do you think the future of these distances is going to be? Um, are you think these young, fast road guys are going to come in and start dropping these records, or do you think they're going to have to chisel their teeth on these shorter distances before they even fathom 
getting to these longer distances and breaking records. Yeah, they'll definitely have to, uh, you know, they'll dial in 50Ks really well, and they'll be crushing that. I mean, like we saw that at uh, you know, a lot of a lot of 50 cases these past couple of years, but like cool this year. Um, I don't yeah. remember the time, but just fly, like I mean, didn't he beat uh, Max King's record by uh, a both handful men of and women? Yeah, both yeah, men and, men and women. Yeah. Yeah, we're just, I mean, just unreal. Yeah, who, who won it for the girls? That was, like, it was, I don't know how much faster than the course record. It was incredible. Like, everyone is just destroying 50Ks, and, like, these these records that you think would, uh, you know, not be taken down are. And, um, yeah, it's it's fun to be a part of this. Like, just, uh, you know, like Sonoma, Lake Sonoma is this next weekend, and um, both a really strong uh, male and women's field. So to watch that play out and... You know, you think how can that course record go down from last year with like you know the excitement of that going on, but uh, it's probably going to go down again. And it's uh, yeah. it's incredible. And I see like you know a lot of these faster runners and stuff, you know, really dialing in 50k's, 50 milers, um, and you know things change after 50 miles. So um, I, I think people will will not be knocking out some fast hundreds, but. Um, you know, it's definitely going to take it's going to take a few races before you're ready for your hundred. I, I think, from my opinion, it, like I, it definitely took me a few hundreds to like kind of dial that in for myself and just you know just kind of grasp your your body and mind around that. It's quite the what happened. Yeah, yeah, what happened? And just yeah, just being ready for that and realizing how mentally challenging it is too. Like a 50k, like when you run really you know fast times from 5k on, like it's definitely mental too, as much as you know physical, but. Um, you know, in those longer races, you have to really have that mindset of like, you know, you're not holding on for two more minutes or five more minutes. You're holding on for five more hours, ten more hours. So it's right. it's just a whole whole new ball game, and um, yeah, it's it's quite the challenge. So I, I look forward to seeing there's some some newbies running Western this year. I think you know, um, I think Sage is doing like a UTMB. Um, yeah. Possibly Rob too. I don't know who's all doing that, but you know, it's really cool to see these. Um, you know, and, and really impressive athletes that have you know dialed it in in other areas, and then going after the hundred. Um, it's a it's a fun distance. I it's my favorite, and uh, I really um, enjoy watching people try to crack that that code. Uh, that's actually going to be my first hundred. Will be this year at Cascade okay. Crest. So you know, okay, awesome. If you're not doing anything at the end of August, you're welcome to come pace me because we're about the same. Oh. Same speed, hey. not, not even remotely. Uh, <laughs> Megan, I want to make sure that uh. We get those stats out there. Megan Roche um, was at 341.56 at way too cool 50k, and it was I believe Patrick Smythe. Yeah, Patrick Smythe Smith uh, was in 304, which beat Max Max King's record by over four minutes, which yeah. is nuts. Yeah, that's it's just really nuts. both of those are just incredible. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's a reason I didn't go back there to race. Like, there's no way I'd I would even be able to like, you know, hang in the top ten of that. Um, it's it's amazing. It's incredible to to witness these people get, you know, just get so strong, so focused on on the speed there. Uh, before uh, before we move into the post show, there's just a couple questions yeah. I want to ask from the chat room here. Um, yeah. U.S. Running, uh, who's been um, or I.U.S. Running, who's been in the chat room the whole show, uh, a frequent mm -hmm. viewer. Question for Tim: How long have you been eating paleo? And was there a I'm going to add on there? Was there a reason that you made the choice to go paleo, or is it just something that works with your yeah. system? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll explain that. And I'm I'm cool going longer, so you know whatever okay. we can we can play this out for a while. Cool. Um, yeah, because this is kind of a, I'll try to sh sum it up, but I've, I've been paleo probably like since 2012-ish, like paleo-ish. I'm like, I'm not uh, strict on anything. Um, like, uh, I am more paleo primal type of diet, and more so that's just, uh, you know, I eat a lot of really good vegetables. Uh, it's kind of my mainstay of what I eat, good whole foods, and um, um, I do eat meat, so, but I try to like eat really clean um, kind of know where where it came from. Um, that the animals are treated well. It's a huge um, prior to priority for me um, when I do eat meat. So I'm um, working with companies like I work with Epic Bar, which is a 100% grass-fed company. Amazing bars that I, um, you know, I had one after my workout today. It's just you know very convenient when I travel. Like I'll bring you know a couple of bars, um, some kale chips I made, and like a couple avocados, and that's kind of my you know go-to meals on the road, especially when I don't know what's going on and. Um, what I'm going to be able to eat, and um, I, I started 
I've had stomach issues for a really long time. Um, yeah, I, going back to high school, like I had problems with uh, with my stomach, and especially when you know you're getting ready to race, and I played basketball and stuff, and you're having stomach issues. And now that I think think about it more, and so I was definitely like stuff that I was eating that probably played you know the diet, just kind of the typical American diet. Um, and I just wasn't um, I wasn't very focused on nutrition. And when I moved to to Oregon, um, I uh, you know, it's definitely more um, um, health conscious type of community that I went to. Um, you know, and that that was a huge part. But I also went to massage school there, and um, got to you know meet a lot of people, talk with a lot of people that had really cool ideas and 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 thoughts about that, and got to talk like to naturopaths and uh, that you know just really have um, researched a lot about food. And I've done I've done a lot of research too, and I think there's lots of really good benefits to eating paleo. It's what's worked well for me for the last. Um, few years and and I feel like it's it's definitely something that I promote and and like and I also th- you know you don't have to um, uh, eat like uh, you don't have to eat meat to be paleo you can definitely you know get protein and get uh, fats and stuff um, before I keep talking are you there yeah okay you yeah like you, okay you look, yeah you looked like you froze for a second so I wanted to make sure that oh I, I'm reading uh, the chat room I realized okay. uh, uh, as I read the chat room, I have to look down this way. Yeah, yeah. So what ends up happening is I kind of freeze. <laughs> as I kind of, I'm sorry. No, man. no, I'm, I'm sorry. Just making I'm trying sure to keep you're up. still there. Yeah, um, right. So, so like back to like massage school is like where I really like, um, you know, decided to take out the um, grains, and I, I started with taking out just you know wheat gluten, um, just because it, it messed with my stomach so much. And um, after I took that out, I was you know gluten free. I was pretty sold on that, and um, and I started having you know less and less stomach issues, but still like you know things would kind of creep up on me, and like uh, it just like man, my stomach could definitely have been better for that run. And I I just go by feel for a lot of things, and um, so I took out um, most most grains then, and like before my like pre race meal and stuff the day before was like quinoa and avocado and and some chicken, and um, I thought that was really good, you know, some healthy cooked in like some coconut oil, and that felt good, but like I was still having some stomach issues, and once I took out quinoa, um, my stomach, you know, just felt completely better, and um, that was was huge for me, so um, that's kind of where I I switched over to the more paleo primal, and I mean, what really started it too is um, when I went to massage school, um, my my wife um, has juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, so she woke up when she was like three or four years old and couldn't walk. And um, so then, it's like, she's been on medication ever since then, uh, like you know, like for you know, twenty plus years on this really harsh medication that there's you know no way that you're gonna be able to have a kid, um, and you're taking these really, uh, I feel like really harmful drugs every day and. Um, and so we tried to um, see if we could get um, her arthritis to go in remission um, from food. And yeah, within like a little bit of time, um, you know, just a few months, like completely changed uh, her life around and it was just so huge. And so, and she's not like, um, she's not paleo, like she eats grains and stuff like that, but just the learning, and she was has been blood tested, so like finding out what she's actually allergic to and what's causing some of these situations. And um, and that was huge. And she's been like that for five plus years. We've been able to, as you most people know, we have a kid. So um, like being able to get pregnant and stuff. And just um, she's still in remission and it's been through food. And so uh, food is your medicine. Like it can fix you if you eat the right stuff. And um, for me, it's really helped fix my stomach. And I feel really strong with it. I feel like having the less... In inflammation type of foods, um, which I feel like um, for some people, or a lot of people, I feel like grains kind of do that too. So I, yeah. I, um, I've taken that away, and I've just had better recovery. I feel stronger after my runs, and just different things that I put in my body, like I, just kind of the the lifestyle routine. It's just like we, you know, we'll get a chicken and cook it, and that's like. Um, our meals for the week, so I'll have like I'll get some cabbage, a big head of cabbage, and I'll just make sandwiches with a uh, you know cabbage leaf, and um, and then like after we have a chicken, I'll use all those bones and put them in the crock pot, and I make uh, like bone broth like every week, oh, yeah. and we have yeah bone broth like fresh bone broth like to use, and and just we cook a lot, we spend a lot of our time in the kitchen, so um it's really nice to have those things on hand, and then I'll just drink you know um, bone broth. Um, all the time is just something, you know, just to kind of keep helping the stomach get, like, electrolytes, get just, you know, really good nutrition. 
Um, other things I use, like um, I, I make our, our own kombucha. So we have like, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but like we have the, the really weird scobies and jars. So there's a lot of random jars of weirdness in my house. And um, I normally start my day with like a cup of kombucha and just, you know, good probiotics to, you know, kind of help the stomach. And I, I like to do it myself just because a lot of the store ones um, have happen to have a lot more sugar than I would yeah. prefer to have in the morning um, and so I, I yeah so I just make my own and, and it seems to yeah it gets the get this, this makes the stomach strong and and uh, I feel like a good way to start the day what do you normally do for nutrition during a big race I imagine that yeah. it might change based off of whatever you know altitude or any of that kind of thing but what's your what's your go-to yeah so uh, let me um, I'll touch on that for a second too because a lot of people um, think that you know paleo is like no sugar and um, and I think that's a great way to live I think sugar is a uh, not a very healthy thing to be eating and definitely messes with a lot of people um, so I've tried to take it out of my diet as much as I can. I've tried uh, using um, other gels and stuff like and like f like dried fruits and and honey and and whatnot um, for racing. And um, during training, I don't use a, a lot of sugar. I I, I use gels, um, you know, um, strategically and minimally in my training. Um, but when it comes to race, I use gels. And I mean, I use other things too, but um, a lot of people, when I say like I'm paleo, and then they ask me, "Do I use gel?" So it's not paleo, uh, but I I've found over the years that gel works really well for me when I'm trying to go as as hard as I'm I'm going. Um, when I do training runs, when I do other things, I try to use other things. So I use a lot like nut butters and stuff, which I, I really like, and that's like that's a huge part of my diet too. I I use nuts for things, they're good fats, and um and that's kind of like sometimes in the morning that's what I'll I'll use to start my days. Nut butters. Um, eggs too in the morning are good. Just some good, just some good protein, some fats. I, I like even I start my day with a, a scoop of like coconut, coconut oil, coconut oil for um, a lot of my days. And I used to put in like my tea and stuff, but I normally just take a scoop of it now. Um, so um, just kind of what has worked for me. Um, and I and so back to like you know paleo primal type of diet. I also um, use carbs. I more I try to use root vegetables as my carbs. Um, like today, I got back from a run and I use fruit as carbs too. So like I'm not, um, I wouldn't consider myself like low carb. I mean it's low carb compared to most people. But if you want to like someone who is like you know, like using ketones as energy and like getting yeah. down that, I'm I'm definitely not ket ketonic. And um, especially when I'm in like my training, like some in the off season. Um, I'll take you know definitely time there where I'm really low carb and um, you know even like some intermittent fasting and, and stuff and um, which is just a just a nice way to cleanse the body and and get it burning um, a little bit more um, fat as fuel and I feel like once you kind of like there's definitely a sluggish time when you first start that but once you get through that phase um, it, it can be really beneficial and I feel like you have like for me at least it's been like really good mental clarity um, the body is just healing recovering well and um, yeah so anyway, back, back to like racing and stuff I, I'm I'll, like before a race I, I try to use um, I use carbs so like I'll have sweet potatoes or yams or something before before um, a race or like a hard training run that'll be kind of like a meal I'll have and sometimes I have you know if we go out for curry I'm gonna have some some white rice in there so I'm not like you know really fixated on you know every time I do that like oh I mess up I, I try to live live by just not judging myself as best I can eating really good healthy foods whole foods good meat um, vegetable, lots of vegetables, fruit, nuts, seeds, good fats, coconut oil, avocados. That's kind of like mainstays in my diet. Um, yeah. And then when I use carbs, I use them strategically. So it's you know it's for a purpose. It's not just you know loading up on um, you know eating uh, you know a bunch of bread when I'm hungry. It's just you know, just not what I what I use, and it, it's worked well for me. Yeah, and it's uh, it'll always be individual. Um, yeah, for those totally. who are watching live, like it, you can take this as uh, another wild card to pull up, pull up your sleeve. You know, like these are tools that Timothy uses and and work for him. Uh, I will also say that so many of these, uh, there are so many diets and fads out there that that punish you for going off. Uh, so I love hearing you say that, Tim. As far as you know, having a little bit of rice with your curry 
granted, that's not necessarily in line with what your ultimate goal is, but it uh, it's not like it's the end of the that. world. Yeah, yeah, it's not like it's the end of the world, and it's not like you're going to beat yourself up for three days. You're like, oh, I had rice. Yeah. How dare I have rice? <laughs> How dare I? Uh, well, no, I, I mean, yeah. like, eating is to enjoy life. You know, like, I eat to enjoy food, and I just want to live a happy, you know, um, life and hopefully live for a while and get to, you know, share many years with with my family and, and loved ones and like I just want to feel good so I, I eat to feel good so when I get up in the morning to eat something it's not because paleo told me to do it I eat it because I it tastes good and it makes me feel good and yeah um, and when I started on this way it, like like you just mentioned a second ago it's definitely um, you know you have to, everything is different for everyone the way I train the way that I eat is not going to work for everyone and how I got into all this stuff and why I, the lifestyle I live now, the way I eat, the way I train, um, why I meditate and stuff is because it makes me feel really good and I feel like it, it really adds to my life and joy of being. And uh, so that's, um, and I keep, I, you know, I keep changing it all the time. It's like I, yeah. I used to eat dairy a little bit and, and lately I haven't been eating dairy as much. And, um, and for different reasons, um, just even like for me, I, was, it was, I would get like some acne and stuff, and I, like, once I took out dairy, that helped me, so, like, for me, um, apparently, like, dairy wasn't the best thing for me, but for other people, um, it's great, and, like, if you can, you know, um, get those nutrients in a good, healthy way, and hopefully respecting the lands, respecting the animals, I, you know, I think that's a, a great way to, to live, and, yeah, go out and eat, eat good stuff, and especially after a good run, good hike in the mountains, like, get back and eat some really good food because that's, you know, it makes you happy. And if you enjoy a beer or a big burger with, you know, yummy buns or whatever, like do it up and enjoy it and don't get, you know, don't get down on yourself. Like live in that moment, enjoy that food, enjoy, uh, you know, those moments that you're sharing with people and, and then forget about it and, and move on to the next moment. Uh, I also want to point out you just said yummy buns. I think yummy, buns. <laughs> yummy buns. Yummy buns. Uh, thank you. I, just, I, <laughs> I was laughing to myself when I said that. <laughs> Uh, I I'm, I want to move into the post show because I still have a number of questions from the chat room, but I like to do that for the post show so we can kind of rapid fire through them. Um, I have to thank you, man, for taking time out of your your busy schedule to to join to join us. Uh, there's a lot of live viewers who are who are coming in and being like, oh my god, Timothy Olson, who come every week for the show and had no idea that you were going to be here, which is it's always really funny to see that in the chat room. Uh, before we move into the post show, we're going to hold on to Timothy just a little bit longer. Uh, there are a number of games going on tonight. It is opening night of baseball. It's uh, NCAA finals tonight. A whole bunch of whole bunch of stuff that we want to let you guys go to and enjoy. There's a segment on the show I like to do with all guests who I bring on for the first time, and it's called the Quickie Question Quiz. Timothy, how this works is I just ask uh, a series of uh, I think there's six or seven questions, rapid fire, just answer as quickly as possible. That's pretty much it. Uh, let me know when you are ready, and I'll just kind of start firing through. Sure, I'll go for it. What was your very first race? Uh, Siskiyou Outback in Ashland, 50K. What's your favorite running movie? Uh, yeah, Prefontaine. I, I watched it in high school, and yeah, I loved it. Trails or road? <laughs> you guess. <laughs> trails. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's trails, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's your favorite place to run these days? My backyard, yeah. Um, going up green is awesome. Dream race or bucket list race? Uh, uh, Diagonal de Fou, I really want to do that one. So, yeah, And uh, Nolan's 14, it's not a race, but I'm hoping to do Nolan's 14 at some point too, which I think will rock. That's, that's actually pretty awesome. Uh, I know that I want, I want you to answer as quickly as possible, but you just said two things that are pretty incredible. Uh, Di Diagonal de, de Fou, that's the jungle race, right? It's like a 100-mile super technical jungle race, is that right? Yeah, yes, um, off the coast of Madagascar, um, yeah, it's like like lava is like flowing like on the island. The island is just so beautiful, very tropical, tons of climbing, really technical. I've never been there, so I, I, I don't know too much about it, but what I've heard from people is like it's a must, I need to go there. Um, so I'm hoping to throw that in. It's you know it's always towards the end of the year. So I like I talked back um, a while ago about my race schedule, and I'm hoping to do maybe a few more races. But like you know, once you get like past September, you're not really sure how your body's going to react. So um, waiting to see what happens. And then also Nolan's 14. That 
not a sanctioned race, but one of those things that's kind of of legend. Uh, yeah. Have you been able to get up into the 14ers and train and, and kind of pick a pick a? Ride? I've, I've been in yeah, I've been in that terrain, but I haven't got to see a lot of the the lines there to connect all those 14ers. So that's um, one of the reasons I'm here and uh, have quite the. A list of people here that can show me around, and so I'm hoping to spend some time there, um, kind of dial in the route this year a little bit, um, see if it works into the schedule next year. But hopefully, in the next few years, that's definitely going to be something that I really want to do. And um, you know, a couple of like uh, Tony's took a crack at it. Uh, Matt Hart lives here; is a really cool dude who's um, accomplished it uh, with Jared Campbell. And so both of those guys are really cool. So I'm hoping to spend some time with them. Um, and also, um, you know, uh, Joe Grant here t is here too, and loves going out on on that stuff. So I'm gonna spend some time with them and and dial that in at some point. God, that's awesome! I, I had no idea. That's really great. Yeah, you are surrounded by people who have either attempted or done it, or uh, you have that knowledge in your backyard, which is pretty yeah. great. Uh, what is your favorite post race indulgence? Oh, uh, um, coconut bliss ice cream. It's amazing mint. It's yeah, the mint one, and then even like I'll have a, a beer occasionally. Oh, Mission uh, Mission IPA from Portland is the only gluten free beer that I've ever had that actually tastes like real beer. So if uh, yeah, if you're gluten free at all, check out Omission. It's it's good stuff. And your current running kicks. What are you running at currently? Uh, the cardiac. Yeah. And finally, your favorite G ginger runner YouTuber. That you're talking to right now. Oh, my favorite. What? You? <laughs> That's it. That's the correct answer. It is me. Uh, very good. Thank but you. People have already uh, mentioned in the chat room that you do have a bit of ginger in your beard. So I, you are actually I, probably the fastest ginger runner on ginger. Am I, am I part, part of the, the gang? I, when, I grow my, when I grow my beard out, it is super red. And like normally when I run in the sun a lot, my hair turns like blonde, but there's definitely a little red tinge to it. Uh, but the beard goes crazy. It's definitely a good red red beard. Well, I, I have to bow down to you then, because you are by far, uh, <laughs> if we'll consider you a ginger, uh, we'll welcome you into the club and consider you the fastest ginger runner uh, that I have on the show, which is pretty, pretty epic. Oh, well, um, thank you. So, Timothy Olson, everybody, uh, remind people where they can find you on social media, because uh, I know that there's a number of places, websites and Instagram and stuff like that. Yeah, so um, most everything is under Timothy Olson. My uh, Twitter account is Timmy Olson, Timmy Olson underscore run. And then, like, my uh, my website's timothyallenolson.com, and that'll have all the links there. Um, to my different social media things, and I try to update those as much as I, I can. Um, sometimes it's a lot of good little selfies up in the mountains, but you know each day is beautiful, and if even it's the same green mountain shot, I, I love being up there and sharing that with uh, my friends, and so I, I try to get that out there as much as I can. Go follow him. Uh, not only is he an incredible runner, uh, an incredible father, but you, you get to hear all of these stories and uh, firsthand. It's, it's pretty great. So go follow Timothy Olson across social media. Let them know. Thanks, man. Thank you for joining us on Ginger Runner Live. We appreciate your feedback. And we're going to move into the post show fairly quickly and just ask a couple questions of him. Uh, there's, a, there's still a lot to talk about. I have to thank all of you for tuning in live. We were an hour earlier tonight. Uh, we will be regular time next Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, with Jamil Curry and recounting his experience at Barkley, uh, the Barkley Marathon, this last week. Uh, I can't wait to hear what the hell happened out there because it's one of those races that you only hear legends about and it's you know one of the toughest 100 milers. It's not really even 100 miles. You never know what it's going to be. <laughs> uh, but that's going to be really exciting next Monday to have him on the show and to talk about that. For those of you who may not know, across social media, it's The Ginger Runner on, on Twitter, uh, The Ginger Runner on Facebook, at Ethan Newberry on Instagram, uh, gingerrunner.com, and of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel, doing live shows every Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, unless, of course, there's a, a brief time change, uh, and new videos every Thursday or Friday. And for all of you who are supporting through Patreon, patreon.com slash thegingerrunner, I cannot thank you enough. Uh, we'll, we'll be posting some new graphics, some new logos, some new um, hats and t-shirt designs, a whole bunch of new stuff for those of you who are at various subscription levels, and you are essentially supporting the Ginger Runner and everything that we're doing here, films, reviews, live shows, everything, and it's really, really exciting. We're almost at $2,000 per month, which is an incredible, 
incredible amount. So I have to thank all of you guys for, for joining us over there. And uh, that is pretty much it. We're going to move quickly into the post show and ask Tim a couple quick questions and, and then let him go. So stick around. Post show starts right after this. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Tim. I'm back. Thank you so much, man. Oh, no problem. It was great. Thank you. Oh, so awesome. Um, I just have a couple questions. We, we are still live. We're just in the post-show section, which is kind of the uh, get all the questions from the audience to you uh, as quickly as possible because there, there were so many during the live show. I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta ask him this. Oh, this is also a good one. <laughs> um, so Shalinda Cor Corrine mentioned this early, early on, and I want to make sure I ask it. How do you deal with having an injury? How do you keep positive and get back into running when your body is able to? I'm having a tough time with this currently. That's from Shalinda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, being injured is definitely not a fun thing. Um, I've been pretty blessed that I haven't had any um, <clears throat> really outrageous injuries. Um, and but I definitely, definitely have had. And I mean, anytime you're doing ultra running, you're going to get some. And uh, you know, um, I try to to move on to something else. And um, I I normally do yoga during that time if I can. Um, I really like to, for me, I really like, uh, you know, getting out and sweating. Like, it's a big thing to get out there, get your, your heart rate up and, and you know, kind of detox and stuff like that. So I'll use, like, um, some Bikram yoga or even go into a sauna and do my own, like, kind of work work on my body, you know, body work. So work on my body, work on my calves. So the calves bother me some sometimes. So um, I had a year where I had, like, I had really terrible plantar fasciitis in my foot where I was, like, you know, like crippling, um, and that was really challenging, and I, I ran through it a lot and way too much and um, probably lasted way too long. So I, I really think um, taking time off can be a good thing, and, like, you know, it's probably not at the most ideal time. It's probably normally at the worst time, but the more you can accept that and then go find, you know, joy in something else um, is what I try to do, and that, that's hard when, like, running is your life, and that's, you know, everything like, but I try to find some other activity that I can do, and, um, yeah, um, take a little bit more time to read and hang with the family. Um, I try to take an injury um, as best I can. Once I can accept it and kind of move on is, like, a blessing where I get to spend some more time with family, and I get to um, read some books that I've been, you know, not not getting to. So it's a hard one, and I, I think one, one thing that has helped me a lot is I, I've got regular body care, um, body work, either you know, acupuncture, massage, chiropractic work. Um, you know, it's it's preventive medicine. It's I love it. I totally believe in it. And um, you know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of really good, talented uh, healers out there, and there's people that like are awful. And um, so you know, if you're not liking your body work or what you know the the doctor you see or anything, like go find someone else. Find someone that you know resonates with you. Um, and so I've, I've been really blessed to have really cool body workers in my life that have helped keep me, um, you know, put together. That's, that's great to hear, especially from elite, uh, yeah. because yeah, I've gone to, you know, a whole bunch of different types of physios and chiropractors and all this kind of thing. And every once in a while you'll find one that's like, this guy or girl isn't really doing what they say they're able to do. But then you'll go to someone else it's like, oh, it finally worked. Yeah, that's that's good to hear that there are good ones and bad ones. From there, yeah, there's I mean, especially in like in that world, like massage, because like there's definitely some states that like have just really you know kind of mellow laws or like you know regulations. So like yeah. you know anyone that took like a class on it can do it. I, I happened to when I went to school, I went to Oregon, and it was like 650 hours is a lot. I like I learned a lot in that class and felt like going to college all over again, and um, I felt like I. I learned a lot there and, and was able to translate that into, you know, pretty good body work. I had a really nice practice that um, I was hope I think I helped a lot of people as you know, best I could. And um, it's hard to, you know, find someone good. And what I've learned, I've seen a lot of people these last um, couple of years with all the traveling and, you know, there's a lot of bad ones out there. So you got to really just, you know, go try another one. And it, it's expensive. That's the hard part is you know, like you go and spend 60 to 100 bucks and like and they did nothing. It's really frustrating. Um, and just remember that you know every like even if it wasn't good, there it came out of love. They were trying and um, you know move on to the next person, thank them for their time, and then go try to find someone else. And um, yeah, they're they're great birthday presents, Christmas presents. Um, 
Yeah, I don't. I don't have a, a massage sponsor, so I'm, I pay that all out of pocket, and it's it's pr it's pricey, but it, it's worth it. And um, having a body that works and you know can can work for many years is is a plus. Yeah, that's that's absolutely true. Uh, a couple of really good sports questions just popped up in the chat room. Uh, Tim, Wisconsin or Duke? <laughs> I'm from Wisconsin, so I am all for Wisconsin. I'm actually the reason that this show started early was my fault. I was like, "Come on, man, the game is starting." Um, and I'm I'm not a huge you know basketball watcher person, but you know when you have a you know, Wisconsin is you know in the like, final four in the championship, but you got to try to catch it. So I'm going for Wisconsin all the way. It's totally okay that you wanted to start it early because I'm in the same boat, and yeah. I am against anyone Duke. So I'm with Wisconsin tonight, so right on. we're on the same team. Uh, and this other question, Tim, if you were Pete Carroll, would you – oh, I just lost it. just scrolled away. Would you have given the ball to Marshawn? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, what a <laughs> – yeah, man. Marshawn, Marshawn Lynch is an animal. He's uh, – yeah, give him some Skittles and he'll rip it through. So, um, yeah, I would have I totally given the ball. It was like the worst play in, in – in NFL history. Uh, yeah. I'm so ashamed of my Seahawks. All right, so we're going to kind of go through some of the questions that were asked earlier. This is from Cody Van Rokel, uh, frequent viewer of the show. Timothy, what does your weekly mileage vertical look like? Um, he talks also mm. about what's your next big race, but we already we already mentioned that. So what's your weekly mileage totals these days? Yeah, right now it's been super low. Like I said, I was doing you know hour and a half workouts and doing like three minute intervals, so I would get <clears throat> you know like 3,000 max, and then I did like one long run a week, which might be three to 5,000, so um, I, so sorry, like that's a lot of vertical for, for most people. Um, last year I was doing like 30,000 feet a week, which um, I love and was great, but a little, maybe a little reckless, um, so I'm definitely, I and my mileage last year was between like 100, 150 miles a week, so um, yeah, I've kind of cut that in half. Like, um, I'm probably doing, you know, 15, 20 uh, k of vert, and you know, less than 100 miles right now. And, and as the season progresses, I will be doing, you know, I'll be in the 100 mile range. I'll be doing more vert. It's always, you know, what race is coming up, and um, and I kind of dial it in towards that. But like last year was hard rock, so I was like really focusing on on vertical. And uh, so it depends what race is coming up. But I also like. Running up mountains is like my favorite thing in the world. So like you know, vertical, I, I love it. I I love hiking, scrambling, running. It's all good. So I I, I do throw in um, and focus on more vertical than like um, mileage. What is your favorite longer route in the Boulder area? Somewhere between twenty and thirty miles at this point. <laughs> it's a great question. I you know I just kind of tag all the peaks. Um, depending on where I start, I, I live closer to Sanitas, so sometimes I'll do Sanitas uh, last or first, but then hit Flag, uh, you know, Green Mountain, Bear Peak, um, South Boulder. Um, so I've been just kind of nailing those. Uh, last year I got to go with uh, Joe Grant to uh, like South Arapaho, I believe, mountain. So I'm really looking forward to the Indian Peaks uh, wilderness opening up a little bit, so I get to to play in, oh, yeah. in those mountains more. So I'm I'll definitely link up some really fun stuff there and all over Colorado here. And um, yeah, I, I think it, touching all those peaks normally turns into around 20 miles or something. So that's what I that's what I've been doing when I go for a long run here. Uh, John Tanner asked earlier, I'd like to know, and I'm going to actually kind of dovetail this question. Uh, mm -hmm. John Tanner asks, I'd like to know if having a family and his transformation of mindset over the last couple of years has made you less competitive. I actually want to know if that's made you more competitive because you do have this family now that you're you're supporting and, and you want to uh, be out there and push as hard as you can as a representative for Tristan and stuff like that. Um. Yeah, but I mean, my life right now, um, I have lots of really awesome inspiration all around it, um, being family, the where I live, friends and stuff, and that inspires me to really push myself. Um, so I, you know, I've been working really hard, and like, and I mean, I'm, you know, I must be um, wanting to do well if I got a coach. Like, uh, like I normally, I would never, I never thought I'd get a coach. Um, it. You know, it troubles me at sometimes, but I, I really like appreciate his help and his insight, and it, it's been huge. And I got a coach so I can be more competitive and stay with all these these fast young kids. So uh, um, yeah, I'm um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to push it harder and, and see what I'm capable of doing uh, this year and years to follow. 
Raul Engel wants to know, have you ever used a heart rate monitor in your training runs to gauge mm. intensity? Do you, uh, do you recommend it? Um, I haven't. Um, but I think a uh, heart rate is a great way to uh, like um, you know get into it and and you know kind of give you clues on how to feel your body. I always go. I, I mean, I can. I don't know what my heart rate is, but I can tell basically where I'm at. Where I'm like, okay, this is a good like fat burning state, just nice and chill. I can talk to to people if I want. I can sing a song like. I kind of go by that, and then there's the you know the sessions where um, I'm going for a really long hard run, and I'm not at max, but I'm really pushing it, and more of a tempo run, and then like the full on you know repeats up mountains or something like that, where I'm definitely way above what my heart rate should be, um, maybe. But I, I like pushing my heart like that, and um, and so anyway, what I come back to is for me, I like to just go play in the mountains. I don't normally hook up a heart rate monitor to me. I've, I've actually never hooked up a heart rate monitor to myself, but um, I've held I've held on to like the treadmill sometimes and since I've used that. I think a heart rate monitor can be a great way to like get into it and, and you know get you into your body, understand it a little bit more. Um, and I, I feel like for racing at least, like I think it can help some people, but for me I like to go by feel and you know when the heart says to go, I go. And uh, finally, this question is from Caleb. What conditioner do you use? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a great question. I use Dr. Bronner's. Um, for everything, whether I'm washing the dishes or washing my hair, so um, it's not the best. My uh, I just had like I my hair is really short. Uh, it was like I just had like five inches taken off of it uh, like a week ago, and um, my hairdresser or whoever cut my hair, you know, yelled at me of course because it's like super dry. And uh, so basically, I, I you know I wash my hair once or twice a, a week with Dr. Bronner's. It definitely gets a little dry, especially here. Um, but then I just let the natural oils ooze. <laughs> so that's my moist. That's my conditioner. <laughs> uh, I love. I love the fact that you just said ooze. I think that's great. Um, well, man, I, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your uh, out of your Monday to join us on the show. Uh, the audience was freaking out the whole time. They can't believe you oh. came on the show. You are invited back. You have one of those invitations that basically goes forever. Uh, so anytime <laughs> you want to come back on, I would love to have you. Uh, I can't. I would like to see. Change your your training over the last six or seven, eight months or so. So yeah. I'd really like to get you after your next race. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm sorry it's taking me this long to get on the show. So um, yeah, we'll have to do something again fault. here. So um, yeah, and I really really appreciate you having me. I love all the questions from everyone. Um, it's fun to do like you know live like Google chat like this because you get that feedback from people and yeah. um, really get people engaged. So it's great and thank you for listening to us. Um, yeah, do our do our little spiel here. Right, re remind people where they can find you. Uh, yeah, timothyellenolson.com is website and uh, yeah, just Timothy Olson Facebook, uh, Twitter, and yeah, well not Instagram. Instagram I think is Timothy Allen Olson as well. Excellent. Thank you all for tuning in live. That is going to be it for uh, for the show. I'm going to let Tim go. We're all going to go back and watch some of the basketball games. Go Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> that, that is it for tonight's show. We'll see you guys next Monday with Jamil Curry at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the regular time. And uh, you guys are great. Thank you for tuning in live. Thank you for supporting on Patreon. And make sure you follow Tim and thank him for joining us on the live show. We'll get him back on um, for sure because uh, he's super knowledgeable, an incredible ultra runner, an incredible family man, and just an all-around nice dude. So that is it for tonight's show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Get out there, train hard, race harder, and party the hardest. That is it. Bye. <laughs>